Whoa, cold this morning. Let's start this puppy up. We're in for a big ride today, so I'm gonna turn the heated grips up so that they light my gloves on fire. Hey, it's Baldy from Adventure Rider, and a couple years ago I rented a 2018 Honda Africa Twin for a ADV Rider Rally for three days in Pahrump, Nevada, and I loved it. The new 2020 model is a massive upgrade, although it looks about the same on the outside, with its new subframe, its massive upgrade in electronics, bigger engines, semi-active suspension, and all the rest. So when Honda offered me a two-month loaner, I thought, oh, ho, ho, I love my life right now. The one I rented in Pa Rump had a manual transmission, but this loaner from Honda came equipped with their famous dual-clutch transmission. So here's the part, you, you know, just never... Clutch? No, there's no clutch, that's a parking brake. No, there's no shifter. Push that button right there. It says DS. There you go. It's weird getting used to the automatic transmission, though. Yeah, do you like, like it or not? Or do you think you'd get used to it? I guess I'd get used to it. When it showed up in my driveway and we rode around town, it got lots of attention. Ooh, look at the gold rims on that thing. Yeah, That's isn't that fancy. nice? That's not gold. Mm, everything it's is fancy. It's an Africa twin. Yeah, even the paint is glittery. I don't know is if that? you can see that. Wow. wow. Oh, it is glittery. So, it's very striking in a Japanese styling kind of way with all the colors and the glittery paint. But honestly, the image that kept coming to mind was the giant Gundam robot in Japan. I'm more into a badass off-road kind of look, like the more off-roady Base Africa Twin model has. I like the look of black with red trim, lower windscreen, and I like off-road tires with tubes. My loaner is the higher-end adventure sports model with a bigger gas tank, 6.5 gallons. Active suspension, tubeless wheels, with an expanded front fairing and taller windscreen. I can see why people would love it for long trips though. For this review, I decided to team up with ADB Rider inmate Kurt, a former Honda engineer and currently a 2017 Africa Twin owner who had a serious adventure with his machine. His ADV forum name is Wheelie King and I was going to see if the name checks out. But before leaving, it took me an hour to figure out these electronics. Easy to learn, they are not. But wow, you can customize everything. I'll net it out for you. First, there are six modes and it's a piece of cake to switch between them. Touring, urban, gravel, and off-road, plus two custom user modes. One for me and one for Kurt's badass settings where he'll probably turn off traction and wheelie control. For each mode, you get to pick what they call bronze, silver, or gold display modes. Bronze is the simplest and just shows RPM, gas, and a few things like the power and traction control settings. Silver adds some stuff like speed, engine braking, and ABS. Gold lights up the display with everything. Temperature, what gear you're in, the seven levels of traction control, and three of wheelie control. It also has Apple's CarPlay, which I used for a while, but I didn't like it covering the display. So I mounted my iPhone instead to display Google Maps. There is a secondary display, so you can see your speed, gas, and other stuff while you use CarPlay, but I thought it was lame compared to the big display panel. There is an additional button on the right handlebar that lets you choose between three sport modes or the default. The different sport modes mainly determine at what RPM the bike will shift. I zoomed with some current Africa Twin owners to find out what their preferences were for that. The regular D mode on it isn't, um, it's just not lively enough. So even on, on, on gravel that's quite loose, I find myself in sport mode in S2. By the way, it takes into account lean angle now, so when you're deep into a turn it's not going to shift on you to mess you up. My best girl and I put in a lot of miles in the hills and around town, and she loved it and said she was totally comfortable. I was too at 6'4". How is it back there? It's good. Are you comfortable? Yeah. I like the look of it. I love the paint job, the colors, the styling. I, I really liked all that. We look pretty good together, don't you think? Oh, I think we do. But I thought you all would appreciate hearing from a true Africa Twin aficionado and a badass rider. So I made the 90 mile ride across the Golden Gate to his house where he and Dean Raffello would take me to their favorite back roads and dirt park. Such tough duty, but I'm here to serve you guys. Well, well, well. Hello. You must be Kurt. 
What fortuitous timing. Yeah, wasn't that perfect? In the age of social distancing, I'll back off so you can see the bike a little uh, better. What do you think of the look? I like it. You'll see here in a moment as I roll mine out, I picked the same color scheme. I like the gold rims, the red, white, and blue. The windscreen is slightly different. They changed that just a little bit. I wasn't sure I liked it, but it worked well on the freeway coming up. Yeah, at my height and torso height. You can't see over the top. I'm looking through it. Oh yeah. And after a day of aggressive riding, leading or following, dust collects on the rider yeah. side of the screen. Yeah. And then as you're coming into the sun on the way home, you can't see through it if you're five foot nine. Have you tried to adjust it? Mine's not adjustable. You want to try to adjust that one? It takes two hands. You grip the here. Yeah, squeeze those in and drop it down. That's new. Oh wow, look at that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, pretty nice, huh? That is nice. Yep, parking brake. Yeah. This is gonna be interesting. Where's my, there they are. Okay, fun. You're, this you're, is what it looks like when they're uh, new and clean. <laughs> well, it's probably the last time it's gonna be this way because you're gonna ride it today and I feel sorry for it. No, very <laughs> interesting. It's just subtly different in a couple of places. Does this have the adjustable seat? It does, yeah. Okay. Two position seat. We could adjust that now since you're five nine. We might, uh, when we get closer to dirt, we might click that down to the lower setting. Lighter than mine. It Which is a little bit lighter, isn't it? It's well. This generation is lighter than the first generation, and mine, we'll see here in a moment, has some gear on it for my big trip. I really like my 2017. Yeah. But if there was an area to say that. Honda had to watch costs, it yeah. would be the suspension. Yeah, so this has the Showa semi-active yeah. suspension. And I, I was messing with the electronics and you can set the preload. Wow. And each time you do, you, you hear it go That's pretty <laughs> up neat. and down and all that. It felt pretty stiff coming up here. I guess in the tour mode, which is what I was using, it's pretty stiff. Is it? Okay. It takes 20 seconds for the screen to come up. That's a little long in my opinion. It's a little long. The heated grips are amazing. Uh, I had them on the highest setting this morning because it was cold. Yeah. And I had to turn it down to medium real fast. There's an up arrow and a down arrow. Yes. Click that and you'll go through urban. Wow. Gravel. Did you guys how to put it in gear yet? No, how do I get it to go in gear? Nobody can figure out how to put it in gear. I couldn't either. Oh, that, oh, wow. Well, let's see what happens. Wow, that's interesting. Wow, it didn't take him long to get comfortable. <laughs> Very interesting. It took you a long time to... Took you a long time to pop a wheelie, probably 10 seconds. Is that, it's too long then. But boy, does it short shift in this whatever mode we're in. Yeah. At 2000 RPM, it finds the next gear. Yeah. That is interesting, but it's smooth. I give it that, it shifts yeah. smoothly. Yeah. The suspension, at least just right there on that very quick around the block, the suspension feels very nice. Yeah, it's great. I sure would like to figure out how to get it not to shift at 2000 RPM. If the sport mode, this, the, the higher you go in sport mode, the higher it shifts. Got pretty good tip-in throttle response. It's not too jerky. That's pretty smooth. Oh yeah, it's got a little character here. Oh, it's it. got some character lines, absolutely. They don't really want to return the loner looking like that. No, I'll... I hear you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had a great opportunity to ride from Banff, Canada southeast along the Rocky Mountains on the CDR, the Continental Divide ride, to Salida, Colorado, where we turned west, essentially, and rode then on the on and off the TAT, the Transamerica Trail, from Salida, Colorado, through Utah, Nevada, and head back here to the Bay Area, head home. Wow. But it was um, probably 70% uh, dirt. When I got this one, of course, it looked similar to that. It had the, the low fender and the street bias tires, yeah. and it packed the front fender full of mud oh, yeah. on the first ride. 
And I said, yeah, this isn't going to work out. So yeah. I researched and found a high fender kit for it. Oh, yeah. And uh, lifted the fender up and then put real knobbies on it. So this is two gallons of fuel. Wow. And it's connected right into the main fuel tank. Wow. And it's fantastic. Nice to meet you. I have to keep my distance. You want to tell us who you are? Oh, Dean Mutsuno on ADV. With a 701 Husky. You like it? Yes, very much so. And then reset, reset that. Every time you cycle the key, it goes back to nanny mode. There, now the traction control's all the way off. There you go. Right. So for the next six hours, I rode Kurt's 2017 Africa Twin, chasing him and Dean through some beautiful sweepers and over a pass through the fog and down in the valley with a reservoir and a stream, and finally off into the dirt. As I said, I'm here to surf. It gave me a really good feeling for the two models and all the upgrades in 2020 and gave Kurt a real opportunity to see what the 2020 was all about and to spend a day with the DCT transmission, which he'd never used before. There's a trigger for upshift and a thumb for downshift. It's like a bicycle shift. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the actuation is actually crisp and fairly predictable when you tell it to shift. So is that one of the settings too? You can shift how fast it, it shifts? Maybe. I haven't had time to look at the owner's manual. Right. But it'll shift pretty smoothly even if you're leaned over. Partial throttle. If you upshift or downshift, it doesn't upset the bike much. Does it blip on downshift? Yeah. Or? So it's pretty good in that regard. Uh, I've got it in the manual setting, right. so I'm telling it when to shift, not the computer. Right. And in that mode, leaned over, partial throttle, upshift, downshift, it stays pretty smooth. I like it. Does it Have you tried it just in full automatic yet? Yeah, when I was headed to your house to pick you up, we were, I was in full automatic. What was that like, automatic? It was, it was nice for, it, I was telling Chris, it'd be great for commuting. So does it feel like a, like a recluse clutch coming off the line? or? Yeah, but smoother than but that. Smoother? Okay. Yeah, they put more engineering into it. However, they're engaging the clutch with hydraulic pressure. I'm not sure how they're doing it. It's really? quite smooth. I, I don't know how they're doing it, but it's pretty smooth. Like I could do a, a slow speed so turnaround. So it does have a clutch. It doesn't have like a torque converter. It's got two clutches. It's got two clutches. Yeah. Okay. So it's already got the next gear picked and it alternates between. Oh, I see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, it, and the, the clutch engagement's pretty good. Like I can do a slow speed turn around right here and just find the friction point with the throttle like you would if it was your hand. So how would it be in technical stuff? Well, we're going to find out later today. <laughs> yeah, okay. And these tires are going to be a good time. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. On that gravel section back there, woo, it spins up pretty easily. But Now, if traction control is in mega nanny mode, you think it would just cut the engine and not spin in the gravel? Yeah. I was wishing I'd spent more than an hour studying electronics at home because we had a little drama trying to turn off the wheelie control. And then the wheelie control, I can't figure it out. Sometimes it'll let it come up, and other times it'll come up to an angle and then just cut out and come come down. Like I said, it's not Kurt friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great bike, but it's, we just gotta figure out the, uh, we gotta turn all the nanny controls off and then it'll be a great bike. The suspension's pretty good too, the electronic suspension. Right. It's surprisingly good. Well, <clears throat> since we didn't know what W stood for, <laughs> <laughs> we just made an adjustment in the settings. Well, we guessed it was weight, adjustable weight. Oh, yeah, but, right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's wheelie, but so now we turned off wheelie control. So why don't you pop a wheelie here? And let's, let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens. Giddy up. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> <laughs> I got a first aid kit. Over backwards with you. <laughs> I've only had that happen once. All right, I think his his uh, screen name on ADV is accurate. I agree. You want to tell your adoring audience what it is? Wheelie King 1. Wheelie King 1. <laughs> so talk to me about this park. Cow Mountain OHV, single track, double track, Jeep roads. Right around the corner here, there's some big berms and we can see up and down the roads where you can slide around and get up high on the berms and things. That'd probably be pretty cool. And there's not too yeah. many people over there. We'll see. Do you know what the air pressure is in the tires? I don't on know, the no. I might have a gauge. I don't know if it'll help me at all, but they I were have a gauge. pretty squirmy. So 
So uh, you said with the boot up time, some of your friends ditch you. I won't mention any names, but <laughs> I oh, saw no. a couple of them leave you for dead. But I carry the first aid kit. That's true. And tools for when people don't bring tools when they have flat tires. That's true. We won't go into that anymore. So all day, almost. Almost. You got some road, you got some dirt. Got a little bit of a two track Jeep trail. That was pretty fun. Yeah, I got my adrenaline going. Good. So uh, DCT or manual? For me personally, manual. I, in my opinion, if I were gonna commute on it perhaps for work and or do longer adventure riding on it that was asphalt and maybe graded fire roads, maintain fire yeah. roads, the DCT would be fantastic. Yeah. Only for me, when I'd start taking that bike places it wasn't meant to go, which I like to do. Yeah. I've had mine in places that it never should have been. That's when I'd start wanting a manual clutch. I do a lot of dual sport riding. I have multiple bikes, you know, an XR400, a Husqvarna 701 Enduro, then the Africa Twin DCT, as well as I have a BMW HP2. I have the 2016 Africa Twin. I'm the first person who, who took delivery of the Africa Twin here in the US. So I, I do a lot of weekend rides, but occasionally I'll take up two months, three months so I did the Pacific Northwest, well, more than Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, and Washington. I did it for uh, for 60 days, and I put 12,000 miles on my Africa Twin, which is a DCT. I'm really happy I have the DCT. Yeah, Why do you like the DCT so much? Well, DCT is not just you know, a technology, but I find freedom, convenience. My mind is not on the bike now. I'm more into looking what the you know what the road looks like in front of me. You know, a little bit of sightseeing and able to use my left hand, put my camera on my left hand, take pictures while on the go. Plus, the best part is at the stop line. I'm always first to take off. I don't know any human being that could take off faster than a DCT. Yeah, and the DCT has changed so much. I I, I had the first version, which was the 2010. That was on that VFR that I had. And then the 2012 VFR my wife has was actually the second version of it. So I, I'm able to compare those two early versions to the one that's on the 2020 that I have. And it is a significant difference. Man, it is, it's just absolutely flawless. If you were to buy again um, today in 2020, would you buy another Honda or would you be looking at KTMs or somebody else? I buy a Honda again. Yeah. Why is that? It's so damn easy to ride. So I'll net out for you the rest of the Zoom call. Number one, the early version of the Africa Twin had fork seal problems and it left a sour taste in Joel's mouth because of the way that Honda handled it. But it doesn't seem to be a problem in the latest versions. Number two, there seems to be a gas tank problem which affects the fuel supply on some of the latest versions with the 6.5 gallon tank, the Adventure Sports version. And that issue can cause a sudden loss of power when you're going 80 miles an hour on the freeway, not cool. As you can imagine on our forum, people are deep ending on this conversation. It happens to only a few bikes maybe in hot regions, I'm not sure. But I'll link to you an in-depth discussion about it on our forum you might want to check out. And number three, they went on for quite a while about how much they love the DCT, even going downhill and dirt when it's tricky and you tap on the brakes and it automatically downshifts because it knows you're a person in need. So after having it for two months and talking to various owners, would I buy one? That's a good question. And the answer is no, not for around town anyway, because I have my faithful hound in the sidecar and I like it that way. And number two, I tested a Zero Black Forest electric and I loved that around town for shorter trips. But if I got a chance to do a longer adventure tour, say up the Alaska Highway, ooh, I'm dreaming now. Yeah, I'd buy one. I gained a lot of respect for it in the last two months and now I can see why it's the number two selling bigger adventure bike in North America anyway. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear what you think. So please comment for all of us to read your pearls of wisdom about the Africa Twin and what you think. And please like and subscribe and I'll catch you the next time around because I have a really fun review that I'm doing on this fantastic new Ural.